All right. So class, this is the home exercise 5.1. So this company is called Freedom Limited. Freedom Limited, a limited company whose main business activity is dealing with retailing of mobile food. The company has its financial year on 31st December 2002 and the trial balance are as follows. So this is the trial balance of the company. Okay, this is trial balance of the company. So there are some information that required our further adjustment. And then what is the requirement? Requirement is based on the above information, we have to prepare the following statement for the financial year ended 31st December 2002. Statement of comprehensive income, statement of changes in equity, and statement of financial position. Lose to the financial statement, if any. So, we will handle this additional information one by one. So, let me turn on my whiteboard. Okay, let's create a new one. So this is for home. This is home exercise 5.1. Alright. So let's look at the first one. The first one say that the closing inventory value as at 31st December 2020 is 428,000. So it means that this amount we have to show in our COGS and also under current asset of the company. Stem of financial position. Next, the next additional information is regarding the land of the company. The market value of the land is 1.2 million. The management plans to create a revaluation reserve and revalue the land to its market value. No depreciation of the land because the land has an infinite useful life. It means that your, your land will not be spoiled will can, and your land can last forever. So it we call infinite useful life. When the item you have is having an infinite useful life, it means that no depreciation. So let's take a look. What is the value of land in the books? So we find land. Land is one million and five thousand. And for this company, do we have revaluation reserve? No, we don't have revaluation reserve. So the adjustment will be in this way. So this is revaluation of land. So the book value is one million and five thousand. The market value is one point two million. So plus from this comparison, what is the difference? What is the difference between market value and book value? You who what is the difference between market value and book value? Yes. The difference is one nine five thousand. And this one nine five is increase in value or decrease in value? Up or down? Yes, this is increase in the fair value of the company. So when we have increase in fair value, our double entry, we debit land 195,000 and we credit to revaluation reserve. 195,000. Land increase 195, and then our revaluation reserve increase 195. And then we have to take note this information we also need to show in other comprehensive income section. So let's reflect this in our trial balance. So we go to our trial balance. The land, the debit, we will increase 195. At the same time, we will create a revaluation reserve.
195 on the credit. Debit lend credit to revaluation reserve. Is it clear? On the double entry of increase in the land value? Can follow or not? Yes, huh? if I'm too fast or too or my voice is not clear, please let me know. Then I can do the necessary adjustment. So far, so good, huh? Okay. Can we proceed to the next adjustment? All right. The next adjustment. It says that freedom limited using reducing balance method to charge the depreciation of motor vehicles and machinery at a rate of 20% and 10% respectively. It means that for motor vehicles, they will charge 20%. For machinery, they will charge 10% depreciation based on the reducing balance method. The management assumed that the scrap value of the asset is based on 10% of its original cost. Depreciation charges shall be recognized in administrative expenses. So the next adjustment is related to what? Is related to the depreciation. So this is depreciation of motor vehicles and machinery. So for this company, right, they are using reducing balance method. So what is the formula for reducing balance method? We use cost minus accumulated depreciation and multiply with the depreciation rate. So we start from motor vehicle first. The cost of motor vehicles motor vehicles 300,000 here the accumulated depreciation for motor vehicles 60,000 so we use 300,000 minus 60,000 times 20% for the machinery we use the cost 450,000 and the accumulated depreciation is 120,000. So 450,000 minus 120,000. And the depreciation rate is 10%. So answer, what is the depreciation charges for motor vehicles and machinery? 480,000 is for which one? Motor vehicles, huh? 48 so 48,000 for the motor vehicles and 33,000 for machinery so is this answer correct correct eh? right but before that let me ask you a question scrap value do we need to consider scrap value when we using we are using reducing balance method? Do we need to consider scrap value? Do not consider scrap value when you are using reducing balance method. Let's take a look on the formula. The formula is what? Cost minus accumulated depreciation and multiplied with the depreciation rate. It means that scrap value is irrelevant information. Scrap value is irrelevant information when we are computing reducing balance method for the depreciation. All right. So very good. Scrap value is irrelevant. Eh? So do not consider scrap value when you're using reducing balance method for depreciation calculation. So next, 
we are going to record the double entry for the depreciation. So we will debit the depreciation and this depreciation is under administrative expenses. The total depreciation is how much? 81,000. And then we will credit accumulated depreciation of your motor vehicles for the 8,000. At the same time, we will credit accumulated depreciation of machinery. 33,000. So this is the double entry. We debit the depreciation and credit to accumulated depreciation of motor vehicles and accumulated depreciation of machinery. So the next thing we are going to do is we have to reflect this in our trial balance. So we go to trial balance. So we find the administrative expenses. <coughs> we add 81,000. And for the accumulated depreciation of your motor vehicles, we add 48,000. And for the accumulated depreciation of machinery, we add 33,000. Hey class, let me ask you something. In the assignment or exam, do you prefer that I give you this trial balance? You prefer or not? So you can just adjust over here, right? Okay, I ask in another way. Who does not prefer that I give you the trial balance? Well, I think the answer is quite positive. Huh? Because in the assignment, right? In your assignment, I have taken up <laughs> the trial balance. I think no one. No. So you prefer I give this in your assignment or not? Yes. Huh? How about the exam? In the exam, if I give you this, do you appreciate? Do you appreciate that I give you this in the exam? Prefer? Huh? Okay. <laughs> Buy one free one promotion. I give you this in your exam. Okay. So work harder for your exam. Eh? So I need to know your preference so I can fine tune accordingly. Alright. So your assignment. Eh? Those I have. Uh, please remember to download again the assignment. Because the, the Excel file that I upload in your assignment is not the complete one. Because I have removed the trial balance column. So uh, I will upload again. So please use the new one. Is that okay? Okay, eh? all right, very good. So, and using the Excel formula traveler is also very good for you eh? because you just need to add in the amount and you can always check that whether your answer is correct or not. So if you found that your travel is not tally, it means that you record wrongly. So you can have an immediate check on your answer. All right. So these are the things that you have to learn. Uh -huh. And then you can set a formula yourself. For example, you set this minus this. So let's say, for example, uh, you forget to record the revaluation reserve. So this will prompt you what is the different amount in your uh, trial balance. All right. So these are the Excel skill that I wish you to learn from what I prepare in your live session. So you just learn from me. Uh. How do I prepare in the live session? You can also prepare this in your exam or assignment. All right. So let's go back to our textbook. So it says that the rate of provision for doubtful debt is 5% for the year ended. Any changes in the provision for doubtful debts will be recognized in administrative expenses. So we have to take a look about the company provision for Doubtful debts currently. At this moment, the company have a provision for doubtful debts eleven thousand and seventy So we know provision for doubtful debts. Huh? 
for provision for dot full decks. So in the exam, I don't think you need to submit this formula because it is very difficult for you to to show this. So in the online assignment or on, online exam, you just prepare a scrap paper and you can calculate yourself. This is the idea that I can share with you. So after you have the answer and then you just reflect in your travelers. So provision for doubtful depths, the formula, we base on the track receivables and multiplied with the rate of provision for doubtful depths. So track receivables of the company 369 and 246, which one is track receivables? Yoohoo! 369 and 246, which one? By right, you should know uh, the debit one is the asset, the credit one is the liability. Track receivables is asset, so 369 is the track receivables. Depreciation rate, sorry, the provision for doubtful debts, the rate is 5%, right? So answer 369 times 5%. So 18450. And we know this is this year. And when we compute the provision for doubtful debts, we have to do a comparison. We have to compare with last year amount. What is the last year amount? Last year amount is 11,070. So last year, 11,070. So we have a difference, right? The difference is 18450 minus 1170. So we get 7,380. So Tell me, this 7,380 is increase in your provision for doubtful debts or decrease? So for increase, this is expenses or income? Tell me, this one increase or decrease and whether it's income or expenses for the company. Yes, we know this is increase, right? Because last year 11, this year 18, so increase. So increase in your provision for doubtful debts. This is what this expense. This is expenses or income for the company. Nature. I want nature. Yes, increase in your provision is your expenses. So we have to provide double entry. Double entry. We debit allowance for doubtful debts. And this allowance for doubtful debts is under your admin expenses 7380 For the credit, we credit to our provision for doubtful debts. And this provision for doubtful debts is under our current asset 7380 Alright, this is the double entry. So next we have to reflect this in our trial balance. So when it comes to trial balance, we add the debit first, we find the administrative expenses, we put at 7380. Alright. And then on the provision for doubtful debts, we add 7380 as well. So you can find that after we make the adjustment, your provision for doubtful debts will match to the amount that we calculate. Okay. Will match to the provision that we calculate for the year. Class, am I too fast?
am I too fast class? Can follow or not? Yuhu! Yeah, nah. Alright, so we move to the next additional information. The next additional information is this one. Freedom has made an advance payment of sales commission amounting to 5000 to its salesman. The sales commission is included in distribution cost. So this one is relating to your advance of sales commission. So from the scenario, it say that I make advance payment of sales commission. How much? Five thousand. So this advance payment of sales commission five thousand. Advance payment, it means what? We pay first. So tell me in the accounting, what is the term that we use for this advance payment? What is the term that we use to describe this advance payment for sales commission? Prepayment or accruals? Pay in advance. So one answer, prepayment. How about others? So I have three answer, four answer, five answer. How about others? Yes, this advance payment is what? Prepayment. So double entry. When you have a prepayment, we debit the prepayment account. Your prepayment is. 5000 and then we credit to sales commission expenses and this sales commission expenses is under distribution expenses by 5000 so this is the double entry when we have a advance payment of sales commission expenses So can we reflect this in our trial balance? So we go to trial balance. First, we add prepayment because the prepayment is not is we do, do not have prepayment, right? So we add a prepayment five thousand on the debit, and then we find the distribution cost a credit five thousand. But plus. For one account, we cannot have two amount, right? For one account, we cannot have two amount. It means that you cannot have one amount in debit, one amount in credit. So what we need to do, we need to net off. So debit is 261,000 and credit is 5,000 only. So it means that we have to net off the 5,000 in the credit to the debit. So how to net off the 5,000 from credit and move to a debit will become minus 5,000. And then after net off, we have to delete this amount as well. So our trial balance will remain the same after the adjustment. All right. So I repeat, we debit a prepayment, 5,000. And then in the distribution cost, we minus a 5,000. Why we minus a 5,000? Because this amount should appear in the credit. But for one account, we'll only have one amount. So we do the net off. Okay, can follow. Eh? Next. Freedom Limited has issues is ordinary share on 30th June 2020. The issue price of share is 1.5 each. This transaction has been included in trial balance. So we take a look on the trial balance of the company. 
So we see this issuance of ordinary share in 30th June total 300,000. Okay, so this is the amount that we receive from the issuance of share. So let's see what is happening. They say that the issue price of the share is 1.5 each. So we have to identify how much is the amount that we have to record in our uh, par value and how much we have to record in the share premium. So we do the working. So this is issuance of share. So they say at the third June 2020, I received 30,000 and my issue price, the selling price, okay, we write issue price. Huh? The issue price is 1.5 each. So my question, how many of the share that we issues? So number of share issues, we use 300,000 divided by 1.5 for each share. So we can get 200,000 shares. It means that this is the number of share that we issue during the year. And we have to do the normal things that we do for chapter 4. We have to identify what is the issue price, what is the par value, and whether we have any premium or not. Issue price 1.5. So we look at the trial balance to see whether we have the par value information. So the par value is $1 each. So we know par value is $1. So the premium is the difference between your issue price and par value, which is 50 cents. So we have to figure out how much we receive under ordinary share and how much we receive under premium. So do the working. So for the ordinary share, we use 200,000 times 1. So we get 200,000 and then for the share premium, we use 200,000 times 0 0.5. So we get 100,000. So this is the working to identify how much of the amount should belong to ordinary share and how much of the amount that should be belongs to share premium. So we show the double entry. So first we debit the issuance of share. Where do I have this account? This account we get from here. Issuance of ordinary share, this amount. Okay, so we debit 300,000 and then we credit to the ordinary share 200,000 and also credit to share premium 100,000 so these are the double entry
Next, we have to reflect this adjustment in our trial balance. So we go to trial balance. First, we debit the issuance of share 300,000. And again, we say that for one account, you cannot have both debit and credit, right? So debit and credit have to net off together. So we will change this 300,000 to the credit. So the amount becomes zero. And then for the ordinary share, we will increase 200,000. For the share premium, we will increase 100,000. So you can check your trial balance. Your trial balance is still the same. But do remember when we compute the statement of changes in equity, we have to record the pre-adjustment amount and then take in the adjustment. Then that one I will show you in detail later. So this is the double entry. So it means that when we prepare the statement of changes in equity, we will not show this amount again. Because this amount we have to record in to our ordinary share capital account and also the share premium account. Class, so far so good. Are you following me? Am I too fast? Or the speed is, is just nice? How about the speed? Okay, eh? let me know if I'm too fast so I can slow down for you. Okay, next adjustment. The, the next adjustment is for the proposed final dividend. The proposed final dividend 10 cents per ordinary share in financial year 2019 has been paid in 31st March 2020. This transaction has been included in the trial balance. So first of all, we have to take a look. We are doing the year end of 2020, right? It means that For dividend, right? This is dividend. Propose 2019 dividend. When shall we record? We have to record in year 2020. So it means that we are doing the financial year 2020, right? It means that this proposed dividend for the financial year 2019 we have to record in this year so it's also said that this has been included in our trial balance let's scan whether we have dividend yes look at this FY2019 proposed dividend paid in March 2020 it means that this 100,000, where shall we record? We will record in statement of changes in equity. All right. This information tells us that this information we shall record in statement of changes in equity. All right. No adjustment in the trial balance is required, but we have to reflect in the statement of changes in equity later. Next, next one. The eight percent preference share are cumulative in nature. Cumulative in nature means that we must pay. If we are not paid this year, we are required to accrue and pay in next year. Freedom Limited is required to pay the unpaid dividend in future financial year so we have to take a look so for this one we have to we have to record in statement of changes in equity so next one is regarding your preference <coughs> Excuse me. 
preference share dividend. So we have to take a look on our textbook. Add percent preference share at one dollar each. The value is five hundred thousand. And during the year, we have made a payment of thirty thousand. So our preference share is five hundred thousand. What is the meaning of eight percent? The meaning of eight percent refer to what? Refer to dividend rate. Right. It means that we are required to pay eight percent of preference share dividend to the preference shareholder. So value five hundred thousand times eight percent, we get. 40,000. However, we have paid during the year 30,000. It means that we have a balance, right? 10,000. This 10,000 is unpaid portion. So tell me, when you have unpaid preference share dividend, what is the nature for this unpaid preference share dividend? What is the terms that we use in our financial statement? How about this? I have two answers, three answers, one, two, three, four, five, six. How about this? When you have expenses but unpaid, the term that we use called a accrual. Very good, accrual. So double entry for accruals. First, we debit the preference share dividend. And your preference share dividend, we debit 10,000. At the same time, we credit to accrual 10,000 as well. Next, we have to show this adjustment in our trial balance. So we go to trial balance. For the preference share dividend, I add 10,000. And then we add another accruals. 10,000 on the credit. Right. By doing this adjustment, our trial balance still remains the same. Next. The management proposed a 2% final dividend for the ordinary share for the financial year ended 31st December 2020. So here we have to figure out what are the proposed dividend? And we have FY2020 proposed final dividend. So what is the percentage? They give 2%, right? So we based on a quantity times par value times 2%. So what is the quantity? What is the quantity of preference share? Class, can you give me the answer? What is the quantity of ordinary share? Is it 1 million? Can I use 1 million for the calculation of a preference share? Sorry, the proposed final dividend. Can I use 1 million? Jocelyn, why your answer is 1.2 million? Why I cannot use 1 million? Hey, how about others? Why no answer? 
Share me your answer. I should use 1 million or 1.2 million for the calculation of proposed final dividend. Yes, very good, Jocelyn. Take a look. The issuance of share take place on when? The issuance of share, where is it? Eh? The issuance of share take place on 30th June 2002. It means that the preference share, uh, sorry, the proposed final dividend is after the issuance of ordinary share meaning that the 2 million sorry the 200,000 of the issuance of share at the 30th June 2020 have to consider when we calculate the proposed final dividend so we should use 1.2 million when we calculate the proposed final dividend why not 1 million because 1 million without consider the issuance of share at the 30th June 2002. This proposed final dividend is on 31st December 2002. It means that after the issuance of share 200,000. So when we calculate the proposed final dividend, we have to include this. So 120,000, 1.2 million times 1 times 2%. 2%. So the answer is 24,000. So next question, shall I record this 24,000 in the statement of changes in equity? Shall I? Can I record this? No. Why no? Because this is proposed final dividend for the current financial year. So we only record in next financial year however we show in notes to the financial statement we are not required to record this in our statement of changes in equity however we have to show in notes to the financial statement so next one The estimated income tax expenses for the financial year ended is 14,000. So this one very simple. For the income tax expenses, income tax expenses, we debit corporate taxation. This is the expenses of the company. 14 right and then we credit to tax payable 14,000 this corporate taxation is the expenses of the company we will show in SOCI and then for the tax payable this is our current liability we will show in statement of financial position so next we reflect this in our trial balance so we will add corporate tax 14,000 on debit and then we will add tax payable 14,000 on credit. Next, which is the last one, we transfer 10,000 from return earning to general reserve. This one we record in the statement of changes in equity later. All right, and now we have finished the adjustment for all the item, and the last one we will do in the statement of changes in equity later. Um, can we take a short break because? I think it's very suffer for you to look at the uh, screen for a long time. Do you want to take a short break? Okay, huh? how long you need? 15 minutes, is that okay? We come back on 12 to 5. 
Okay lah, make it twelve thirty lah. Easy. Alright. Okay, twelve thirty.